every computer has an operating system. Yeah. The purpose of an operating system is to ensure that the different programs that are running on the computer have equal access to all the different resources. And so the operating system, therefore, uh, allows for uh, a fair distribution of the resources. If you didn't have an operating system, then any program could come along and start sucking up the resources of the computer. It could, uh, a program could, could suddenly seize all of the CPU power and all of the, the memory and, and the, the, the storage capacity and the peripherals. And so the, the operating system on a computer allows for multiple programs to coexist um, harmoniously so that they all work properly. And so today, when we're looking at the world at large, we have a completely interconnected, interdependent uh, world where all of our communication systems are linked, our financial systems, economies, everything is completely interconnected and interdependent, and yet we do not have a smoothly functioning global operating system for the world. We don't have one. And so when you look at it from a logic standpoint, then it completely makes sense. All of the problems that we have in the world, uh, it makes sense that we have these problems because we don't have a smoothly functioning global operating system. So I think one of the, the fundamental tasks of our time is to uh, come together with a common vision of a positive future to then put our heads and our hearts together to figure out how do we create this global operating system. Now, we, we do have a lot of different pieces and parts, like, for example, the United Nations mm -hmm. is, uh, despite its numerous challenges and needs for ref uh, uh, upgrading, um, the, the United Nations is this incredible gift to humanity, and yet it's really not quite enough. So I think we have some homework to do to create this, this global operating system, but as far as I'm concerned, until we have that, we're going to continue to see problems in the world such as that we have today, and in fact probably even have more problems. So that's um, kind of what I mean when I say the global operating system. Let me ask you a, a, a hypothetical question, or a question that, that I've asked many other guests on the show when we talk about spirituality and religious philosophies and, and, and how these philosophies have molded our existence and our societies to date. Have we outgrown the need for traditional religious philosophies? Have we outgrown the need for traditional uh, religious philosophy? Well, I think, <clears throat> so there's a difference between religion and spirituality. And as I see it, you know, religion is, you know, very dogmatic. It contains rules. You should mm -hmm. do this. You shouldn't do that. Um, and spirituality is something quite different. And it's, it's really more about um, honoring life and respecting uh, each other and, um, doing things that are morally, um, uh, you know, the, the right thing to do. Um, and so I think has the world outgrown the need for religions? I think maybe that could be said. I think if we focused more on spirituality and less on religion, mm -hmm. I think the world would be a better place. And in fact, of course, the whole point of the Rainbow Bridge is to do uh, exactly that by by taking what is in all of the world's major religions or, or wisdom traditions and putting it into a different language um, of universal principles that is the language of spirituality and so I think this is very important for, for the times in which we're living Exo Nation, my guest this hour is Brent Hunter and we're talking to Brent about his book The Rainbow Bridge the Bridge to Inner Peace and to World Peace. His website is www.therainbowbridge.org. You're an IT tech. You've, you've come from a diverse religious background. You've been in business for yourself at the, at the beginning of the dot-com industry. What changes have you seen in society based on spirituality throughout that voyage you're on? Well, one of the things that I've seen, Rob, is that there's a, a, a much greater connectivity amongst the people of the world. Uh, you know, with the advent of the Internet, mm -hmm. um, it allows people to communicate all over, literally all over the world almost instantaneously at very, very low cost. 
And when you, when you look at it from that perspective, that's a very powerful, miraculous tool. It's a miraculous capability that we have that the world has really never seen before. And, and as I look at that and I say, and I see the results of that, some of the results are that people are recognizing that we're all uh, wanting the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we all want to have a, a, a peaceful, happy, fulfilling life, regardless of where we where we live. And so I think the the, the power of technology and specifically the internet is helping uh, to bring about a greater understanding of people, uh, all of our brothers and sisters around the world. And I think that's a major thing that I see happening: a greater recognition that we're all, you know, kind of in this together. And I think that's very important. It's a very important shift uh, for us to take. I think the whole concept of world citizenship, that that we're all global citizens on this planet, uh, regardless of where we live, is an extremely important concept. Um, Sometimes people don't sometimes people don't think about it too much and they just kind of discard the concept mm-hmm. but if you think about um if you if you live here in the US for example and you live in a in a in a, in a city uh and that city is located in a state so here I am in in LA well I'm also a Californian but I'm not just a Californian I'm, I'm also an, an American um and being a, an American doesn't uh, preclude me from being a Californian so uh in the, in the same vein um, coming from America does not preclude me from being a global citizen. And I think the whole concept of, of world citizenship is very, very important for our times, and it's one of the concepts that I talk about in the Rainbow Bridge. But is society ready for the one world citizenship? Well, I think um, if we, if we want to have a world that works for all and, and that we're not constantly battling and fighting each other and, mm-hmm. and, and resolving issues based on brute force and whoever has the best weapons. I mean, um, I, I don't think that that's a very positive future to be fighting about things all the time. And I think, I think that it, there's, a, there's a deep um, seated urge um, and, and really almost need for, for peaceful coexistence that, that it resides in the hearts of all people everywhere. So are we ready for that? I think absolutely we're ready for it. But it, but it won't just happen overnight. No, I mean, people have to take action. And so the whole concept, for example, of the Rainbow Bridge and the mm-hmm. Universal Principles, that is something that can open people's hearts and open people's minds to, you know, to the the commonalities that we that we have with one another. And then from there, um, for example, the second part of the Rainbow Bridge talks about how do we use these universal principles mm-hmm. to to help create a better world. So I I do believe that um, that people are ready, some more than others, and uh, we need to just keep doing whatever we can in our individual lives and collectively. All right, stand by, Brent. I've got to take my news break at the bottom of the hour. Brent Hunter's our guest this hour. He's the author of The Rainbow Bridge, his website, www.therainbowbridge.org. We'll be back after the news. My name's Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Are you considering calling a psychic to read your situation? Then consider David Champion, a psychic medium for more than 20 years with thousands of readings under his belt. David Champion will make you feel comfortable. He has proven to be honest and accurate. He's a straight shooter. There's no guesswork. What he sees is what you get. While he is a medium, most of the calls focus on relationships. Not only love, but work school, neighbors, and more. Need help with finding a job and preparing for the interview? Are you dealing with people who are obstacles in your path? For more information, go to davidchampion.com, $1.50 per minute, paid by credit card, with a minimum of 30 minutes. For your reading with David Champion, call one 702 8598 That's one 702 8598 
Now you can dial in to listen to the Exxon Radio Show from anywhere in the world with Rob McConnell 24 7 365 by dialing 213 401 0080. That's 213 401 0080. If you have a mobile phone or landline, the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is now at your beck and call at 213 401 0080. That's 213 401 0080 24 7. 365. Now you can dial in to listen to the X Zone Radio Show from anywhere in the world with Rob McConnell 24 7 365 by dialing 213 401 0080. That's 213 401 0080. If you have a mobile phone or landline, the X Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is now at your beck and call at 213 401 0080. That's 213 401 0080 24 7 365. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Brent Hunter is my special guest. Uh, Brent is the author of The Rainbow Bridge, The Bridge to Inner Peace and to World Peace. His website is www.therainbowbridge.org. Before uh, we went to the news, Brent, we were talking about the readiness or this being the right time for one world peace. And it's been my experience over the many years that un, uh, that just like democracy, democracy does not work in certain, in certain places of the world. For example, you had Egypt a couple of years ago that rioted because they wanted a democratic system. They wanted democracy. Now, they're getting rid of democracy and going back to what they had before. We've seen this in other parts of the world where our idea of democracy is not accepted. It has caused problems within the the countries that we have tried to push democracy on. It doesn't work. So what is the difference between, what, in your opinion, what is the difference between democracy as we know it that isn't being accepted worldwide, and inner peace spirituality that you believe will be accepted worldwide? Um, well, Rob, I think um, I, I actually don't believe that, um, that there's a reversal of democracy. I think there, it, it, it looks like that in a kind of a temporary way mm-hmm. um, in Egypt, for example. Um, but I, I look at it like this. Um, People have a, a, a pain threshold. People in societies have a certain threshold mm-hmm. for pain. Yeah. And people don't like to be in pain. But at a certain point, people say, okay, enough is enough. We're not, this is not acceptable, whatever it is, whether it's um, uh, the, the, the leaders that are running a country or whether it's you know, people working in a company and they just don't what they see, whatever it is, um, or whether it's individuals we, mm-hmm. or that are in a relationship or dealing with some kind of situation, when the pain threshold gets too high, they, they demand change, and they seek out change. And so the world, um, for example, there's lots of different statistics, but the one uh, that really is alarming to me is that about half the people in the world are struggling to survive on less than $2 a day. Mm-hmm. When you look at that, that's just a that's a crazy, crazy statistic from the United Nations. And even if you take in consideration uh, barter and uh, trade agreements and mm-hmm. currency differences and things like that, clearly we have in, an enormous problem. So when you look at it from the perspective of, you know, is, is, is the planet in enough pain? Uh, are people in enough pain that, that, are, that they actually are, are yearning for, for a major change to take place? And I believe the answer to that is yes. I think that the, the problems in the world today are, 
way too serious. We've got multiple simultaneous global crises that are taking place from the financial crisis to, of course, the environmental crisis and uh, you could just, you know, the energy crisis, you could go on and on. And so that's what leads me to believe and, 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 and be very hopeful and, and optimistic that people are ready for a change. But again, it's, it's people are looking for how. How do we come about? How, how do we have this world peace? How do we, you know, create this bridge to peace? Mm-hmm. What do we need to do? And I think that's what, you know, that's what the Rainbow Bridge is all about. To address